Hello, just bring you back. Right, I've got my parts uh, for the carb repair and I've got these new rubbers. Um, so, and I've been given my orders to film everything. Um, thanks Mark Wright for subscribing and uh, keeping me in check, mate. Appreciate it, thank you. So anyway, <clears throat> I'm sure you don't need to see this taking the tank off and take seats off, side panels off, that's two 5mm hex jobs, and then 12mm 12 12mm 12 bolt from there into there. I've just propped it up with a bit of wood, because underneath the back, where's my pointy stick? There's oh, two vent pipes there and there which go on those two vent tubes and there's the little clip on each one so undo them two and fuel tap I've already taken them off, I cheated let's get the uh, let's get the really rubbish torch fuel tap that hose came off of there and then there's a vacuum hose there, which goes onto there on the fuel tap. And then, need some new batteries for that. I'm gonna pull the tank, grab hold of the tank, pull it backwards, and then it's off, it's free. Uh, no, it's not, there's uh, that for the fuel gauge. And, <laughs> Can I do it one handed? Where are we? Let me show you. Push in, pull out, that's it. Fuel gauge. So, uh, let's see. <laughs> I'll uh, just swap the camera around. Will it stay in place? Still ain't got a tripod. So, uh, well done with the keys. Off camera. Let's see if this works. These are notoriously tough to get off. So, I've greased Grease the rubber grommets that it sits on. There you go. Here we go. I'm going to sit that down on the bench. That's heavy because I, I put 10 litres of fuel in it. <laughs> Which was... Uh, clever. Bearing in mind I knew I was going to have to take it all apart but uh, I actually got right to the bottom and eventually ran out. Uh, but now I've taken that off with the fuel in it, I'm gonna start the bike and purposefully run it out because carbs coming out, so I'm gonna use up all that fuel that's in the system. Let's see, if she, see if she'll start.
that running uh, till all the fuel was gone. I'm holding my thumb over the vacuum pipe where it connects it to the fuel tap. I'm going to stick a bolt or something in there, just making it run slow. So this might take 10 15 minutes to run out. Okay, that's out of petrol now, or near enough. Uh, it took about three minutes. <laughs> so, uh, what I'm going to do now is leave it overnight. It's uh, Tuesday, Tuesday evening. I wasn't expecting any of the parts to turn up today, but they did. Uh, so, that was good next day. So, I'm going to leave this overnight. Um, the fuel hose is hanging loose off top of the carbs. So, hopefully, anything left will just vent out. Um, so I want the carbs as dry as possible, it's horrible messing with them when they're full of petrol. Um, and I've got the tank which has got 10 litres of fuel in it on the bench propped up. Uh, so I can see overnight if anything drips out of that tap which I'm sure is okay, it's fine. Um, what I'll do now is I'll just show you the parts that have turned up and uh, I'll give you a little comparison between the inlet rubbers and uh, show you what I'm going to do tomorrow. Okay, there's the uh, four carb repair kits or the bottom end repair kits. I haven't gone for the full full Monty with the with the jets in as well because I'm just going to clean the jets out, go with that. But uh, you've got a gasket for the float bowl. That's the needle and the seat, or whatever you want to call it. I call them needle and seats because I spent years and years working for Austin Rover on SU carbs, and it was a needle and seat in those. So. Anyway, valve, whatever. Um, and you've got various one, two, three, four, five O rings in there. One, two, three, four, five O rings. Uh, so one of them goes on there. And I don't know where the others go. I'll have to check in the manual. But when I pull it apart, I'll soon find out where all the others live so that's a good thing i'm replacing those because they might be perished inside there it's a 2002 bike 2003 registration but it was 2002 built so that's 15 years old so that's them and these are the new inlets uh, they're basically i've just measured them the distance that that there is 12 mil half an inch um, shorter than the ones on the bike and the inside diameter on these the smallest part the smallest diameter well this end is 32 mil and when I take them off the bike these ones I'll measure the smallest entire diameter, which I'm, I'm pretty sure. Well, we'll find out tomorrow. I'm just going to take a rough guess at 20, 25, something like that. But we'll see. It's quite, it's quite a small hole in these. But yeah, so they, those are going to replace these, which will bring the carbs 12 mil forward, which means. This air box, which is mounted there, there, and there, has to go forward that much. Um, I've already got uh, probably to the actual bolt, ignore the flange, I've probably already got five mil of movement, which is good. And I've looked at other people's pictures. You basically drum all these out to give yourself, make sure you've got enough to push this forward half an inch luckily there's plenty of there's plenty of room there to do it so i'm quite pleased with that um so tomorrow in fact i'll take the battery out now because to get the calves off we need to undo these take the battery out of the way slide the air box back as far as it goes which is not a lot undo these couplings um, I'm going to take all this pipe work off 
all these vent tubes and the, all this stuff I'm going to take off first because having done this a couple of days ago I realised if I take all of that off first it gives you a bit more room um, there's all sorts of vacuum pipes but I'll go through that each bit with you um, and then undo these boys here full of carb, uh, full of airbox back as far as it goes Pull the carbs out of those and then slide the carbs out of the tiniest gap in the world. But the good thing is, when I put the new ones of these on, I'm going to have an extra half an inch gap. So I'm hoping, with everything out of the way, I can install these, push this back as far as it goes now. All this, all this will be out of the way. There's a, <clears throat> there's a loom here which goes to the carb heaters, the, the famous ones I broke. So all this comes out of the way. That goes back as far as it can to the frame. It's about, that's probably 15 mil out. So when I've got the new ones in, I will have 15 mil that way, plus an extra 12 mil that way. So I should be able to install these first, and then put the carbs back in, push them in that way and then slide this forward well that's the theory of it whatever happens I've got an extra 12 mil clearance which is gonna should stop me breaking things in the future so anyway that's it um, I'm gonna whip the battery out now just stick it on stick it on charge or on, stick it on the bench on one of the charges and then tomorrow we'll uh, get into the actual business of doing this so uh, I'll see you tomorrow but it will see be same video cheers okay uh, same evening <laughs> it's only two minutes after I've just left off uh, I thought I'd do a bit more three bolts out for the air filter um, I'm gonna take the air filter out because no doubt it's a bit petrolly again it's a brand new air filter, so I'm going to take it out and let it put it on the bench with the other stuff, let it vent and let help to vent out any vapours from the carbs, any, any more fuel that's in there. So I'm just going to whip this one out. If I can do this one handed. the three screws holding on the snorkel I think we'll call it and then there's another four screws that hold on the filter and you probably can't see this this one's awkward to get to Stick them in me magnetic tray. That's the cover. Um, I had to re glue this where it had been getting petrolly. This has expanded, so I had to cut a piece out of it and re glue it back down. It's like a rubber seal just around the edge. So that can go up there. There's the air filter. sniff yeah it's a bit petrol it's not too bad right I'll stick that up there and let's have a look in there yeah you can see the wet where the petrol is I don't know if that's just normal um, vapor coming out of the uh, crankcase because it's now breathing properly into here but to be honest I'm just going to 
Yeah, that's actually smells more like oil vapor, what should be in there, as opposed to the other day, it was definitely pretty much neat petrol. So, yeah, not too bad. You do get you do get uh, crankcase vapors breathing into here, and then there's a, an outlet tube, which is this one. There's a filter just there. There's a little little filter which I changed. It just filters out any gunk. Um, so the other two tubes here are the breather tubes that I took off the bottom of the tank. They come up to here and it looks like the clips have slid down, which is good fun. Yeah, clips have slid down. I'm gonna pull these right out because they'll be in the way of the carbs coming out. But looks like I'm about to lose a clip. There it is. Right, so that's those two. They can go in the pile. Not sure where I should leave the clips on those or not. Hopefully I won't lose them. Uh, might as well carry on. There's two, two vent pipes. Uh, yeah, I think they're vent pipes. Because the overflows the carb overflows ones end here somewhere, just just in here. Where are they? Yeah, that's the two overflows from the carbs, which need to need to be freed. Um, yeah. I also need to while I remember. Unplug them too. That's the loom to the carb heaters. You've got a red and black and a black. Um, one, they split off. One goes to the outside, two carbs, one, one and four. And then the other one goes to the inside, two carbs, two and three. So that's clear. Um, there's a connector here which is for the throttle position sensor I think correct me if I'm wrong I'm pretty sure that's what that is so let's uh, oh one-handed 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 no nope. gonna have to put you down for this one Not sure what you can see, <laughs> sorry about that. That's just gonna fall over, I know it. They don't wanna come out today, they come out fine the other day. There you go, I just had to, if you can see me, I had to push the little plastic squidgy in. Let's get you back, back in the room. This is my phone, by the way, I don't have a camera. This is, <laughs> so uh, it's in, what you can see there, is one of them little phone wallet holder things. So anyway, these these bits here, Pretty sure events. Let's pull them out. That's one of them. And then there's another one the same on the other side. They pull back to there. Yeah. It's that orientation. Uh, we'll pop them underneath there. 
and the fuel pipe itself that went to the petrol tap there I'm going to pull that off because I did it the other day and I know where it goes uh, or did it have hose clips no it had hose clips on it uh, so I might I'm not sure if I can get to those I'll have a look uh, where are you I think we need more light on this subject. Um, where are we? There's the clip. go that's the pipe same on the other side I hope let's go round where are you That's the fuel pipe that goes from petrol tap down splits into it each side make sure them clips are still on there yeah it's gonna get left on there with the other the other crap stick that up there bench put my torch with the knackered batteries on the bench that's what I should have done okay what else did we have um, let's think apart from the throttle cables but I'd take them off once the carbs have slid out uh, oh yes this vacuum pipe on number three Inlet manifold. Where's my ply? It's gone. Uh, clip up. Put the pipe off. That's just going to live up there somewhere. I'm going to poke her in. That goes up to there. I think that's something to do with the air induction system, but. That's fine. Uh, see if I can pop off these these blanks. Yeah, because I need these for the for the new inlets. So I can go in there. There's another spare one on the other side. That's that one. And then this one, which this is the one that goes to the fuel tap, provides the vacuum for the fuel tap. If I can get that off. Yeah, there you go. Put her in there. Uh, what else is uh, in the way? Yeah, these two. These are the drains and the carb overflow drain things. Uh, can't really get them off until the carbs are out because they come out the bottom. Uh, I don't think of anything else that's attached. That's, uh, pop 
pull that out of the way. So, undo these four. Uh, one there. You could just see those. There's four of them. Uh, they're three mil Allen keys. And the choke cable, it's a eight mil or a, or a Phillips. I'll undo that and pull it out of there. And then these, these here, four of these, two on the, one and four has got them on the top and two and three has got, got them on the bottom underneath. Uh, I hope you can see, I can't. So I'll whip them off and them off and that off. I'll find some batteries later. All right. Choke cable, there she goes. All right, that's release that, comes over the top, and that pops out of there. I'm gonna dangle that down there, and just nip that up so that I don't lose the, the little bracket there. All right, torch battery died, so I've got this uh, rather, rather yellow light going on. But uh, these four are what I need to get to. One-handed. Anyway, I'll undo these four off camera and we'll see if we can get all the stuff out of the way to push the air filter back, air filter housing, and then we'll undo the front. All right, undone those clips, push them back onto there so there's no resistance. Um, loosen this off, pull out couple of bits of cable I might depends how it goes pushing this back I might have to disconnect these there these two in fact you know what I'm gonna do that because that is gonna get it out of the way for when I'm taking the carbs in and out the less in the way the better there you go Right, that's good. That's, that's out of the way. Let's see if we can pull these back. There you go. Right, that's about as far back as that's going. And if you can imagine, when you undo these and pull the carbs out of these, whatever that is, about, they go in about eight or 10 mil. You gotta pull it out of there and have enough room between them to pull it this way, which is why it's gonna be a bit of a blessing having the shorter intake rubbers on. So that's good. I'm now gonna undo these kiddies and see if I can pull them and get it out and try and get you somewhere looking at this without a tripod so that you can watch me struggle getting this out and break some more stuff oh dear sorry about this I want to keep you propped up. Right, I've undone these, these clips. Now I've got to try and pull these carbs out of the rubbers. Oh, there it is. Okay, 
This is the funny bit. Trying to find enough room to get the carbs out. Okay. Make note, I don't know if you can see on here, the, the throttle pull and return. Make a note of the order they go in because on certain years they go the other way around on this year they go this way around uh, it was uh, highly confusing when I did it the other day and what I managed to do was I got it back put it in one way realized that it the other way around swapped it round, and then realized I had these two actually twisted so they didn't flow nicely it didn't actually affect the throttle, but it's not how it should be. So anyway, I'm taking these off, so that's fine. Okay, getting these throttle cables off and on. On is even worse. Getting them off is still a nightmare, but we're basically going to undo the 10 mil, 10 mil top nut, which frees off the cable. And I really don't know if you can see this, but the the end of the cable just goes in a little notch. Yeah, no, you probably can't see it. I'm just going to have to go for it, I'm afraid. Uh, getting them on is an absolute ball ache. Um, I think it's widely recognize that you should take them off at the handlebar end and leave this bit as it is um, but I'm going to be stripping these carbs and I don't want the cables in my way so the only one thing I've got to the only one saving grace is that this isn't a Triumph Daytona 1200. If it was, I'd be crying by now, getting these off. Um, if you, <laughs> any four cylinder mid 90s Triumph, which has virtually got these carbs on anyway, they're slightly different, different shaped outlet, inlet, sorry, air inlet, they're oval. But they're basically, I'm pretty sure they're Makunis on that one. Um, what was it, where was I? Ah, on, on the Triumph Daytona, definitely take the grip off the handlebars and then feed it all through and then pull it out and then um, get it on the bench, do what you're doing. If you want to take them off, then fine, but put them on on the bench and then feed it through because there's just no way on earth that you're ever going to get those cables on and off while it's anywhere near the bike. Uh, unless you're some sort of special magician right these are going on the bench all right there's the inlet rubbers we're going to change uh these are great fun with the carbs in <laughs> i've it was, i've had i've changed these with the carbs in what i thought if i have these on the carbs as i slide them in and then bolt them in afterwards i tried that oh mate that's fun uh the bolts underneath up there you just can't get to them and the other thing is well you can get to them but it takes hours the other thing is the, they're allen bolts allen head bolts hex head bolts uh, cap heads whatever you want to call them why not put hexagon head bolts then you could get a little what let's say a 10 mil underneath here you could get a spanner at least to get a little bit of a turn on it to get it working but with an Allen key, I've got a nice set of ball end Allen keys, all long reach and everything, but they, they just you just can't get past the carbs. And even in that lot, trying to find one, what you really need is that one, uh, chopped down to size, which I really should do. Cut it down so that it's just a much shorter that might be something to to think about 
or just ask Yamaha to stop putting these on. But I guess it sort of proves the point that these are supposed to go on first and then you're supposed to struggle with getting the carbs in and pushing it in that way and then sliding this forward. So it's probably, it's probably reasonable, but you know, what's wrong with a hex head? Uh, I think I lost the footage a minute ago with the carbs. Carbs on the bench. Going to leave them upright so that any petrol doesn't get up into the diaphragms. Uh, probably can't get up there past the sliders, but you never know. I don't want fuel up in the, in the diaphragms. Um, going to snip these that I put on the other day so I can get the heater loom out of the way. There's your heaters. One, two, three. And the other one's broken in there somewhere. Uh, I, can pro I can do this without disconnecting these. I just need the other part of the loom out of the way. I'm a bit scared of disconnecting these in case I break any more. So I'm going to leave them, leave them as they are. Uh, let's see, you can see where I've been in before with uh, the king of copper grease, trying to make everything slide nicely. That's it. We're going to leave it there tonight. Uh, an hour later than I last said, I'm going to leave it there tonight. So tomorrow, we're going to take them off, put the new ones in place. We're going to dremel these slots out so that the air filter can move forward more and we're going to get these, get all this clear and um, whatever white sheet or something all over here so when I do these I'm going to do them one at a time and I need to be patient springy not bull in a china shop springy to get this done properly. So that's for tomorrow. I'm going to stitch this lot together, post it up online um, as part one, because there's going to be no doubt two or three, four bits of this, and it'll just go on for an hour. So that's it. I'll just uh, spin you around. We have a word to camera. Right. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Stick my tools away. Get this place buttoned up. Go in. Get a bath, and I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks ever so much for watching, really appreciate it. I've been Springy, cheers.